it's happened to you and I know it's happened to me several times and I am very, very aware of the times when it has happened to me and I've caught that mistake. You're online, you read something, you watch a video or someone tells you something and that communication causes you to not take action. You're thinking of doing something and then you read something or you hear something or someone tells you something and you decide, hey, I'm not going to do that. It's a bad idea. And a lot of times it's a mistake. And so the lesson is you always have to think for yourself. Always. In this video, we're going to talk about mathematics, the hardest mathematics. And I'm also going to show you how to learn that math. And I'm going to explain why when you learn this type of math, it basically opens the door for a lot more. The world is yours. You can learn so much more after you get through this hurdle. But I want to start with a story, a sad story of a dream killer that's related to this. I call it a dream killer because, I mean, it is. So I'm, I'm all for trolling on the internet. I, I'm a big video game troller, but <laughs> there's a certain kind of trolling that's not good. And that's the trolling that really kills people's dreams. I was on some message board maybe 15 years ago. And there was a guy, he posted how he loved calculus. He was really good at integrals and he was taking differential equations. He had an A and he wanted to study mathematics. He wanted to know what the next steps were. You know, what should I do to learn math? I want to get a math degree. I want to get a PhD. Super motivated kid, you know, just very, very positive energy. And I was reading through the comments and one of the senior members there on the message board posted something like, oh, you know, well, if, if you're really good at integrals and calculus, that doesn't mean that you're going to be really good at mathematics. You know, mathematics is not about solving hard integrals, this and that. It's about proof writing. It's about learning to write proofs. And, you know, the guy replied, oh, what's proof writing, you know? And he, he told him, oh, well, you know, it's, it's, you have to do this and you have to study this and it's really, really hard and it's painful and it's just very, very negative, you know, just a very negative response. And I, I don't know what happened to that person on the internet. I don't know that, that random person who loved calculus. But I feel like the response was kind of like a dream killer. So in this video, I'm going to try to like negate that response because we're going to talk about proof writing. Proof writing is the hardest mathematics you can learn. It's the hardest type of mathematics. There are specific fields in mathematics that are really hard. For example, algebraic topology. I have a book here. This is probably one of the hardest uh, math subjects um, that, that you can learn is algebraic topology. It's a graduate level subject. You need to know topology. No joke, right? Super, super hardcore stuff. But I want to talk about the hardest type of mathematics. You know, how do you get to that? How do you get to study algebraic topology? The first step is to learn to write proofs. Okay, and it takes, it takes a lot of work. So that, that internet troll, that dream killer that I read about, several years ago who was maybe destroying this person's dreams, you know, they were, they were partially right. Proof writing is very hard. And it's often the reason that a lot of people give up on mathematics, because if you can learn to write proofs, you can get a math degree. So, so how is proof writing different from like calculus? So when you take a calculus class, you know, you go to class, you take notes, most of the problems are computational. You know, a lot of times you have to know some concepts and you have to relate those concepts to solve the problems. And that's a beautiful thing. A, a really good example um, is, you know, finding the equation of a plane, which you do a lot of in calculus three, you know, given a normal vector, uh, a vector normal to the plane at a point on the plane, you can find the equation of the plane. And so in those problems, they give you different types of information and you kind of have to piece it together mentally, graphically, you know, use the cross product, think about parallel vectors and stuff. And you can come up with a nice, beautiful solution using what you know, using some knowledge, not so not so much algebraic. But most math is algebraic. You know, you have the quadratic formula, you have the rules of calculus. So when you get to proof writing, it's a little bit different. It's all about logic and it's really beautiful. And once you understand the structure of proof writing, you can go so much farther in mathematics. I mean, you can just take it to the next level. It, it really is a beautiful thing. So how do you learn to write proofs? Well, in my opinion, the best way to learn to write proofs is to take a class, right? You, you want to take a class with, with someone who is good at writing proofs. And I know that's not always possible because oftentimes there's only one teacher teaching, you know, a proof writing class at your college. 
and that teacher might not be great. So you're out of luck. So the best you can do really is hope for a good teacher, take as many math classes as you can, and watch as many videos as you can on the internet on proofwriting. Another way is to get a book. So I've got a couple books here I'll show you really quickly that I think are all great. And let's just start with the free one. I have a free book. It's free. Zero money. It's online. It's free. Anyone in the world can access this book. And I'm pretty sure it's been translated into other languages. I'm pretty sure there's a version in Spanish. I'm not positive. I don't. I'm not sure, actually. I'm not sure. It's called Book of Proof. Uh, it's written by Richard Hammock. It's a free book. If it's free, you're wondering why I have it. I bought it on Amazon. <laughs> I collect books. I need the physical book. By the way, I will leave links in the description of this video to all of the books I'm talking about, except maybe that algebraic topology one because I might not be able to find it, but I'll try. So great book, Richard Hammock, Book of Proof. I've done maybe 40 problems from this book and I've read maybe portions of five to six chapters. Uh, I think I read one or two chapters completely. It's been a while. Great book, great exercises. It'll help you learn to write proofs. Now, you can't just buy this book and learn to write proofs, right? It's going to take a lot of work. It's going to take a lot of effort. But it's the hardest math, right? It's it's the hardest math people learn. It's it's what stops people from, from going into pure math, from going into you know a mathematics degree. People drop out because of proofs. Another one that has been recommended to me by an old professor of mine and also highly recommended by several of the subscribers here on the channel is How to Read and Do Proofs by Solo. I've only read small portions of this book, but it's pretty good. I like it. Um, so I'll leave a link in the description as well. A newer one that's very inexpensive and very popular, and I've already done a full review on this book. It's called Proofs, a long form mathematics textbook by Jay Cummings. It's a big, thick book, also fantastic. I recommend it. Now we're going to get to my favorite ones, which are a little bit more expensive. This one I used to teach an independent study course in college several years ago with a handful of students. And I remember one of the students uh, didn't really like it, um, but I disagree. I think it's better. Introduction to Abstract Mathematics by Bond and Keen. This one has all kinds of cool topics on different areas of math. Great explanations, great exercises. One that my dear friend uh, used to always recommend. He passed away. Um, it's been like eight months now. And it's called A Transition to Advanced Mathematics by Chartrand, Palamini, and Zhang. Great book. Awesome. And my current favorite one on writing proofs is How to Prove It uh, by Daniel, uh, by Bellman. <laughs> Solo is How to Read and Do Proofs. Uh, this one's really good. I didn't want to buy this book, but I felt like I was pressured. A lot of people kept saying, get the book, get the book, get the book. So I bought it. The reason I didn't want to buy it is because I paid more than $20 for it. So I try to budget purchase all my books. I have a lot of books here. I'm not rich. It's just I've been collecting books for a very long time. I'm not going to date myself, but it's been it's been a very long time. Definitely over 15 years. Al almost two decades or maybe almost two decades now. Yeah. So great, great book. Definitely recommend it for writing proofs. So you get these books, you know, you go online and you buy a book and you get it and you're excited. So what do you do? You know, well, you start reading it, right? You, you sit down, you know, with, with a pencil or a piece of paper and you start reading the book and you start trying to understand what's going on. All these books start with logic. Okay, so logic is basically logic, right? They, they teach you the symbols. Um, you have and, you have or, you have negations, you know, what's a statement? And it starts off very, very symbolic. It's very, very symbolic logic. And then from the logic, usually most of these books, they go into something called set theory. So set is basically a collection of objects. And you start doing proofs with set theory. And those proofs are directly related to logic. So a lot of the steps follow from the things you learn in logic, which makes it a very easy transition. And then it starts to get a little more exciting. You start to do some you know, basic number theory proofs and other things. Some of those books have advanced calculus proofs and stuff. And it just takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of time. You have to take your time when you're learning to write proofs. It's not like a calculus class, you know, where, you know, you go home after class and you do 15 calculus problems or 25 calculus problems in one night. It's not going to happen with proofs, right? You're probably not going to come home and do and do 25 proofs. It just, it just doesn't work that way. Uh, just as a concrete example, when I was in graduate school, I took um, a full year of graduate level abstract algebra. And it was a really cool class because we didn't have any tests, uh, just no tests. And we basically had assignments that were due every two weeks. And we only had like, I don't want to say a handful, but I would say maybe if you count like the multiple parts, maybe 12 questions to do sometimes. And they were due every two weeks. And the questions were like handpicked by the professor. Like he made the assignments. They were carefully picked. 
And you know, you couldn't just go on Google and find the answers. It's really, really hard stuff, right? Um, I mean, back then you couldn't, right? Maybe now, I mean, the internet's a lot bigger now. There's a lot more stuff on the internet now. There's a lot more math on the internet. So it's probably easier to find answers online, but you know, you wanna figure them out on your own. You wanna work through it and you wanna learn. And that's the thing with proofs, you know, even if you have the answer to the proof, because these books, this will have really good, well-written proofs in it. Even if you have those answers in there, it's still going to be hard because you still have to put in the effort to understand the answers. So that's the thing with proofs. It's, it's a lot harder to understand the proofs than it is to say, oh, how do you integrate, you know, e to the x times sine x with respect to x? Well, you use integration by parts twice and, you know, it basically loops and yeah, it's a really clever problem. That's not as hard. That's much, much easier than writing a basic proof. So if you get one of these books and you start writing proofs, you know, don't don't feel defeated. So that that's the hardest math subject. It's proof writing. That that there's nothing harder. And I mean, there there are specific math subjects like algebraic topology, uh, functional analysis is one that is considered pretty tough. Although I personally think algebraic topology is much much harder than functional analysis, uh, which is way harder, I think. Um, but as far as like general math areas, like a general type of mathematics, the hardest type of mathematics is proof writing. And, and most people never get there. They don't. They don't. Because, I mean, even if you think about if you think about YouTube, think about all the math videos on YouTube. Think about the popular math videos. All the really popular, like, like not like this one, but like people where people are actually doing mathematics, like solving a math problem. They're usually like clever, tricky problems that have like some type of mass appeal. Like most people, like, oh, algebra. I know some algebra. Let me see if I can figure this out using some algebra. You never see like, you know, a really in-depth, uh, topology proof showing up as a trending video on YouTube. Why? Because no one knows topology, right? Because no one has taken the effort. Not not as many people take the effort necessary to get to that level of math. Why? Because people can't get through the proof writing or because it's so hard. But it's worth it. It's worth it. And that's why I wanted to make this video because I, I want to tell you about it, right? Proof writing is a beautiful thing. It's something that's cool and it's amazing. I also have... Um, some playlist on my channel here. I've got one on set theory where I'm wearing a, a little wizard hat. It's really <laughs> ridiculous and the quality isn't great. This is, I think I made these before I even knew how to edit with a really old phone, although I still use a really old phone. Anyways, uh, those videos are very good in the sense that the proofs are very clean. So a word of warning when you're trying to learn proofs, if, if, you, if you buy one of these books and you don't understand the proofs, get another book, go to another resource. Try to find a source where you can find well-written proofs, okay? Because, you know, not all proofs are created equal. You know, two people can write the same proof and one proof is much more clear. The best proofs are those that are written clearly and explain everything in a very, very clear fashion, right? And there's a big difference in textbooks and how they write their proofs. For example, if you pick up a book um, like Principles of Mathematical Analysis by Walter Rudin, which is a great book, it's a famous book. It's extremely rigorous and extremely dry and the proofs, are extremely hard to read because he doesn't really explain anything. You know, he'll he'll give you the epsilon, which is how you start the proof in a lot of these problems. Then he'll he'll give you delta, but he'll never show you how he figured it out. He'll just skip so many steps, and a lot of times it'll say, you know, the proof is left as an exercise to the reader. And there's all kinds of reasons books do that, right? I mean, a lot of it is because you know the people writing the books know that in order to learn to write proof writing, you kind of have to you know, really work through it on your own and, and kind of like, you know, suffer through it and, you know, put in the work yourself. But at the same time, I always think it's better if those books had all the answers and then, you know, leave it up to the individual. You know, if the individual wants to look at the answer, let them be, right? But at the end of the day with proof writing, you really want to try to, you know, put in the effort and learn and it'll open the door to all kinds of math. Once you learn to write proofs, you can study abstract algebra. You can study advanced calculus. You can study complex analysis. You can study topology. You can study, um, you know, well, discrete mathematics that has some proofs, but you learn proofs in discrete math. You, know, you can do you can do proofs with PDEs and DEs. You can do any type of math proof. You just have to learn that specific subject. You know, functional analysis. You can learn about metric spaces. That's a really nice transition from advanced calculus because a lot of the proofs have the same flavor. So, like the world of mathematics really opens up for you once you learn proof writing. And so I think if if you are watching this video still and you're thinking, should I learn proof writing? Yes. Yes, it will it will completely change the way you think. It will change the way you talk. It, it will change your life, right? Because it's so logical, it's so beautiful, and it requires so much careful thought. You're probably not used to thinking this carefully until you learn to write proofs.
That, that, that I guarantee it's going to, it's going to change the way you think about things. The good lesson to take away from it is try to apply that logical thinking and that careful thinking in, you know, to your life situations. Not many people do that. So yeah. Anyways, kind of a long video, um, proof writing. I hope it's been helpful and it's definitely the hardest type of math. Oh, if you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing. Also, I do have an Instagram. It's the real math sorcerer. I'm fairly new on Instagram and I've been posting there almost every day. It's fun because it's, it's, you know, it's very low effort. It's easy and I can put music on stuff. So yeah, it's cool. Good luck. And if you decide to learn proof writing, you know, learn. If, and if you're going to get one book, my advice would be get this one. I just think the size is good. It's a good book. I, I love this book. Good luck and go do some math.